the dogs are stir crazy. Scott. It only takes someone to walk past the yard to trigger them. All the dogs go wild, but Debbie reserves discipline for the worst offender, Sky. Sky. She's fitted with a shock collar to control her. Now you're pressing the tone on her, so she realizes that if she goes any further, she's going to get shot. Yeah. They've been using a shock collar on Sky for six months. Yet Sky's still barking. She's still biting. Well, yeah, wake up and smell the coffee, of course. They're not identifying the reasons why Sky is exhibiting aggressive behaviors. They're just controlling what irritates them, and in a very abusive way. Good girl. Yeah. Good girl, but you didn't really have any choice in the matter, did you? No. <laughs> I felt that we needed the shock collar for our safety as well as the dog's safety, because they're so big and strong. They're extremely hard to control. The problems you have here are very serious. But I want you to know that if you have the right attitude, there are a lot of things that I can do for you here. But you have to be committed, and you have to work alongside me. Are you ready to do that? We're ready. We're ready. We're very ready. OK. Victoria's first move is to get rid of all inhumane dog control devices. Let's take a look at this. Looks like medieval torture. You've got a highly anxious dog here that barks a lot because that's part of her instinct, and yet you're telling her off for it. Each time she barks, bang, you're zapping her. That's why this is going in the trash. Skye is suffering with so much anxiety. The veins in her muzzle pop out. Her eyes are always staring. The shock collar isn't the only restraining device Debbie uses. Now I want to talk a little bit about prong collars. If there's an argument, well, these collars are fine if you use them properly. Well, I don't believe they're fine, whether they're used properly or not. People say, well, put the prong collar around your arm and then give it a squeeze and you'll feel it's not that bad. How about trying it on your neck? Yeah. Neck is a very sensitive area on a dog. It's a very sensitive area on a human. And see those marks on your neck? I can feel them, too. Mm-hmm. I don't want it around my dog's neck anymore. They saw for the first time, felt for the first time, what their dogs go through each time on a walk, and it was not pleasant. And what happens is the trachea, over time, can collapse or become bent, and it can cause all sorts of breathing problems heart problems, and in some cases, death. So these are going to join the shock collar, and we're going to throw them in the trash. I know one of the major problems is when Skye and the rest of the dogs fly at the fence. So the number of ways we're going to prevent this. This whistle is now going to replace the shock collar. We're going to use positive training to start Skye on the road to rehabilitation. OK. I'm just going to charge it up. For the recall, I'm using a hunting whistle. Sky's a hunting dog. And I blew the whistle a number of times to charge it up. Blowing the whistle, giving a treat. Blowing the whistle, giving a treat. So eventually, Sky began to see the whistle as the precursor of a treat. There's a person walking with the dog right now. <laughs> Good girl! All right, Debbie, I just want you to blow the whistle a few times, do the treat afterwards. OK. Reward her immediately, you blow the whistle. Good girl. That's Stay. Stay. I'm seeing great response from Sky right away. It'll be a long process, but we're just thrilled that there is hope. Stay. I think Todd and Debbie are responding very well and enjoying seeing the results, but you got to work at it. Go, go, now. Good. Good girl. Very good. Good girl. I think because she's earning rewards in the form of food and of praise, she's going to start to love this training, love coming back when the whistle is blown. We're now at the next stage. Now I want to see what she's like with a person and a dog. Are you ready? We're ready. OK. 
As the passers-by approach, Watch me. Victoria wants to occupy Skye's mind to stop her from reacting. Good girl. Watch me. Stay. 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 <laughs> the lure of another dog is too big. But Victoria has a response. Good girl. Sit. Good girl. Stay. What a good girl. She's doing great. Good girl. The next time the dog walks past. Oh, what a good girl. What a watch me. Sky good remains girl. calm. Good girl. Good girl. Very good. Sky's a clever girl. She's a good girl. So good girl. Good girl. Sky. Now blow your whistle now. That's it. Good girl. Good girl. She did absolutely brilliantly. How do you feel about it that. was exciting to watch Victoria. It really was. It, it was, was amazing. amazing. What a great girl she is. I am so thrilled with the progress that we've made so far. And that is a huge, huge thing. We're showing her that there is another way. Right. You know, and, and it's tough. This is not easy by any stretch of the imagination. It is very, very tough to do this. Sky needs exercise, she needs to get out. You need to be able to walk with her well on the leash. It has to be safe. This is a head collar. It displaces the weight around the head so the dog cannot pull. In order for the training to go further, Sky first needs to accept the head collar. So literally, I'm gonna show her the treat on the other side of the nose loop. She's gonna put her nose through. She gets the treat. Oh. -ho. Oh, she's such a And you can see the actual bit. It's not supposed to be a muzzle. It goes behind so the dog can still pant and can still drink. Sky, Sky, watch me. I want her to concentrate on commands rather than on what she has around her face. Because remember, the prong collar was giving her pain, was building up a negative association with walking. We desensitize her to the head collar so she almost forgets it's on. Good things happen when it's on her face. And so that she can concentrate, or I can concentrate, on training her that the other dog in the distance is a good thing. Now that the head collar is on, they hit the street. To see how much progress Skye has made, Victoria wants to walk her near another dog. I've got my friend Joyce and her dog Jasmine, who's a very, very calm dog, at the other end of this cul-de-sac. Jasmine is very good at giving calming signals and is going to be as less of a threat as possible. And calming signals are things like sniffing on the ground when another dog is approaching, showing um, the behind or showing the side of the dog. OK, let's do it. Let's go. To keep things safe and stop Sky from pulling, Victoria is using a head collar. What Joyce is doing now is getting Jasmine to do some calming signals. She's putting treats on the ground, and it looks like Jasmine's sniffing on the ground. I'm allowing Skye to look at Jasmine, and then when she looks back at me, good girl, she gets a treat. There you go. Now we're going to do a follow. As the dogs get closer, Victoria signals Joyce to walk in the other direction with Jasmine. I want her to smell where Jasmine's been. There. Good girl. What a good girl. She's done very well. She sees another dog pretty close to her now. She's not reacting. And I think that's a pretty good response for the start. It's a great result. Sky remains calm. What I want you to do is I want you to practice following some other dogs at a distance because she did accept that. But please don't go too fast because if you go too fast with the training and she has a bad traumatic experience, then that puts her right back in square one again. Let's go, Sky. Let's go. Good girl. 